chunking across part of the NLP and language series from Zetetic. It's about how to choose your words wisely and carefully. Chunking in NLP is really a computer term and refers to chunking down or up or across. This video is about chunking across, also known as chunking sideways or chunking laterally. All of this together is often referred to as omnidirectional chunking. And omnidirectional chunking is a very useful skill to have because I think in our everyday language it is useful to be able to chunk up, chunk down and chunk across as necessary in our conversation. They are all useful because it's all about how to choose your words wisely and carefully or even how to use your mind. What is chunking across? It's really identifying equivalent adjacent frames. I'm just going to say that again because it's a bit of a mouthful. It's really about identifying equivalent adjacent frames whilst maintaining the same level of abstraction. So your language is not moving up or down. <clears throat> In fact, you're using your language as a platform or a bridge, a bridge, horizontal or expanding meaning. And this <clears throat> has a lot to do with metaphor in NLP. <clears throat> I think that there are two main benefits of chunking across, that is laterally or horizontally. The first one is to understand something in a different way or to understand one thing in terms of something else. And sometimes that's the best way that we can understand something is in terms of something else. So we can use it to check, to confirm and to test understanding. And the second benefit is creativity. Because chunking across or using chunking as a bridge enables us to think in a completely different way. So what people might say is something like, oh, I'd never thought of it like that. So that is literally, I'd never thought of it like that. I'd been thinking of it in another way. So this is like a reframe. So for example, you might feel that you need a chair. That's the item called a chair. But do you need a chair? Because by chunking sideways, we can say, well, what's the purpose of this chair thing that I think I need? Is it to sit on? So then we might say, what else can I sit on? <clears throat> and I can sit on rocks. I can sit on the fence. I can sit on grass, I can sit on a blanket, I can sit on a bed. I can sit on one of those walking stick things that's got a kind of chair at the end of it. Or I can sit on a wall. So we start to look at the relationship between ideas. It's kind of saying, what is this like? Is this like this? Or is this like something else? I was speaking with a client last week and we were discussing his business being like an additional child that he had. And when we considered his business in terms of his business being a child, we got all kinds of insights about his business and about how he could manage it because he's a dad of three children. <clears throat> the next thing I'm going to move on to, my third point, is chunking up first. 
Now there's quite a lot in the NLP literature that you may find if you research this topic suggesting that it's a good idea to chunk up first to a more abstract level and then down to a lateral or sideways level. I'm not sure that I agree with this. I certainly don't think that you always have to do it. I think you might choose to do it. So I'll give you an example of how you might do it. <clears throat> so let's say someone is discussing painting or having difficulty with their painting, which is something that they do. Between you, you might want to chunk up to art and then once you've chucked, chunked up to art, consider chunking down and across to different kinds of art, like sculpture, music, dance, collage, photography. So that is a way that chunking across can be used in relationship to chunking up and down. <clears throat> I don't think it's a necessity though. Chunking across is sometimes just about once upon a time. Sometimes it's just about the seeding of an idea which then develops. I'm working with a romantic novelist at the moment, helping her with her next novel. And she talked to me a lot about seeding the ideas at the start of the novel, that perhaps this young woman will change her mind and not feel quite so against this guy. And you kind of, the idea is seeded. Maybe they will fall for each other early on and then develops through the story. And as my colleague and friend Pamela Gawler Wright says, when it comes to working with somebody, you can start anywhere. When it comes to chunking sideways, you can start anywhere. Here's some questions you can ask. You can ask what or where else? Or you can ask, what's this like? Or you can ask, how else could we dot 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 or does this remind you of anything and what we're really doing is nurturing the process of inquiry our company name zetetic means proceeding by inquiry and proceeding by inquiry in chunking sideways is a very useful thing to do. <clears throat> <clears throat> and now to the warning. Do you know people who have a kind of metaphorical answer to everything? I certainly do. Maybe they've been on a storytelling training or something like that. Oh dear. And sometimes when people behave like this, their answer to everything is a story. Can I tell you a story? And I always feel in these kind of situations like, oh no, please don't. Please just tell me directly what it is you want to tell me. Please don't tell me a story. So that's my warning about falling in love with storytelling too much. It's really annoying. I'd also like to remind you um, when you use any of these processes to use the zetetic rigor model that is to recover information and generate experiential richness through what you're doing. If you like these videos please like them or this one, uh, ask a question if you would like to and I would be delighted and thrilled if you subscribed to my channel.